Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Another day that God has given us by his grace, Thursday the 15th of December. Let us pray that God will strengthen us for the day, give us the grace we need to, to go through this day, um, being more like Jesus, imitating Christ more in our attitude and our behavior, in our words, and just this overall strength. I know the number of people suffering from cold or flu, um, uh, and so we pray that God will give us all strength during this time of cold and flu. Let's pray. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. <clears throat> Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. <clears throat> the wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice the desert shall blossom and burst into song. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not. Your God is coming with judgment, coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a heart and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The ransomed of the Lord shall return with singing with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. Now is the time to wake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. 
Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. For the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. All right, our collect. Let's um, let's go to our collect. Um, this morning, the collect, of course, is third week of Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the psalm this morning is Psalm 76. Psalm 76. <clears throat> the Lord has made fast his throne for judgment. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. At Salem is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. There broke he the flashing arrows of the bow, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of war. In the light of splendor you appeared, glorious from the eternal mountains. The boastful were plundered, they have slept their sleep. None of the warriors can lift their hand. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both horse and chariot fell stunned. Terrible are you in majesty. Who can stand before your face when you are angry? You caused your judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth trembled and was still. When God arose to judgment to save all the meek upon earth, you crushed the wrath of the peoples and bridled the wrathful remnant. Make a vow to the Lord your God and keep it. Let all who are round about him bring gifts to him that is worthy to be feared. He breaks down the spirit of princes and strikes terror in the kings of the earth. The Lord has made fast his throne for judgment. And our prayer. Majestic and gracious God, more awesome than the agents of war, more powerful than the wrath of nations, restrain the violence of the peoples and draw the despised of the earth into the joyful life of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Okay, let's move on. Let's move to our, our reading from Isaiah. And it's Isaiah chapter 51, oh, verse 17. Isaiah 51 from verse 9 to 16. 
yes, uh, 9 to 16. <clears throat> awake, awake, arm of the Lord. Clothe yourself with strength. Awake, as in days gone by, as in generations of old. Was it not you who cut Rahab to pieces, who pierced that monster through? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made a road in the depths of the sea so that the redeemed might cross over? Those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you fear mere mortals, human beings who are but grass, that you forget the Lord, your maker, who stretches out the heavens and who lays the foundations of the earth, that you live in constant terror every day because of the wrath of the oppressor who is bent on destruction. For where is the wrath of the oppressor? The cowering prisoners will soon be set free. They will not die in their dungeon, nor will they lack bread. For I am the Lord your God, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the, so with the shadow of my hand. I who set the heavens in place, who laid the foundations of the earth, and who say to Zion, you are my people. Uh, we stop there. All right. Uh, and of course, this... Uh, Again, we, we are talking about God's reign over Zion, his people, the people of God. And um, there's a time coming, says the prophet. Those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. We look forward, we live, sisters and brothers, in anticipation of the fullness of that day <clears throat> when all of God's people will come into the presence of God, into Zion, with singing and gladness, and there'll be no more sorrow and no more sighing. You know, I, I have a funeral today. I have a number of funerals funerals this 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 season and it's a reminder to us that even though we may have sorrow now mourning now weeping the psalmist told us may endure for the night but joy comes in the morning <clears throat> it doesn't mean tomorrow morning or the next morning but we anticipate the day when the fullness of God's joy will be poured out upon us and there'll be no more sorrow or sighing. You know, one of the one of the gifts that I say that Jesus brings is joy. And yet we only we only get a glimpse of that joy in our present sinful state. Uh, I, mean, I mean joy is there, but it's tinged and it's mixed with the sin that we, we, we have joy today and there's sorrow tomorrow. But the day is coming when the ransomed of the Lord, the redeemed of the Lord, shall return. Those whom God has rescued will come home to God, as it were. And we will sing 
and there will be no more so sorrow or, or sadness. <clears throat> this is our hope. This is our, our prayer for that day to come. As we wait in anticipation during Advent. Advent is that time of waiting. Waiting for the kingdom to come. For God's rule. For God's rule to come in fullness upon this earth. We wait and we wait and we wait. Amen. Let's um, go to our second reading, which is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. All right, Second Thessalonians chapter two. Concerning the coming of the Lord, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our being gathered together to be with him, I beg you, my brothers and sisters, not to be so easily confused in your thinking are upset by the claim that the day of the Lord has come. Perhaps it is thought that we said this while prophesying or preaching, or that we wrote it in a letter. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for the day will not come until the final rebellion takes place and the wicked one appears, who is destined for hell. He will oppose every so-called God uh, or object of worship and will put himself above them all. He will even go in and sit down in God's temple and claim to be God. Don't you remember? I told you all this while I was with you. Yet there is something that keeps this from happening now and you know what it is. At the proper time, then, the wicked one will appear. The mysterious wickedness is already at work. But what is going to happen will not happen until the one who holds it back is taken out of the way. Then the wicked one will be revealed. But when the Lord Jesus comes, he will kill him with the breath from his mouth and destroy him with his dazzling presence. The wicked one will come with the power of Satan and perform all kinds of false miracles and wonders and use every kind of wicked deceit on those who will perish. They will perish because they did not welcome and love the truth so as to be saved. And so God sends the power of error to work in them so that they believe what is false. The result is that all who have not believed the truth, but have taken pleasure in sin, will be condemned. <clears throat> we must thank God at all times for you, brothers and sisters, you whom, for, um, you whom the Lord loves. For God chose you as the first, to be saved by the Spirit's power, to make you his holy people, and by your faith in the truth. God called you to this through the good news we preach to you. He called you to possess your share of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, our brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold on to those truths which we taught you both in our preaching and in our letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and in his grace gave us unfailing courage and a firm hope, encourage you and strengthen you always to do and say what is good. Amen. <coughs> The coming of the wicked one. 
this this second chapter of Thessalonians is uh, has been quite enigmatic for scholars for Bible students ever since Paul wrote it. Who is this wicked one that Paul is talking about? There are two mysterious questions here. Well, Paul Paul is addressing the coming of the Lord as he has as he has been doing in both of these um, epistles. Um, both First and Second Thessalonians speak about the coming of the Lord, and apparently the believers in Thessalonica, some people had gone around telling them that the Lord had already come and they missed it. <laughs> and Paul says, no, it's not the case at all because the Lord will not return until the rebellion takes place and the wicked one appears. Who is this wicked one? And what is this rebellion? And the second enigmatic, enigmatic bit of this is the, the, the restraining one, the one who, who keeps the reason the wicked one hasn't, re, hasn't, hasn't appeared as yet is because there is a power, a force, a, there is someone who restrains him. And when that one is taken out of the way, then the wicked one will appear. And there's a whole lot of theories about what Paul means here. There's some idea, I mean, maybe some of it is explained maybe in the book of Revelation where the wicked one there is the evil one himself um, the dragon the, 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 and the two beasts they are the wicked one I mean you, you know they're three but they're one because they work together as one and it is believed that Paul is talking about this um, there, there is a there is a force, there is a person, there may be even an organization, whatever it is, something that will be so, um, so wicked, so, so horrible in, 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 in opposing the people of God. That's why he's called the wicked one. It might be a person, it might be a philosophical system, it might be a religious system, it might be an ideology, it might be an institution, or whatever it is. There is this wicked one that will come, Paul says, and he will seek to destroy the people of God. Uh, he says in verse 9, the wicked one will come with the power of Satan, perform all kinds of false miracles and wonders, and use every kind of wicked deceit on those who will perish. Notice, it's those who are going to perish who are going to be drawn to the wicked one. Again, we get that in the book of Revelation with the beast. Some people say this is, this is an antichrist, and I, I have no problem with that, an antichrist. And, uh, and, and he's, he's already made the point that, that there are many wicked ones. The mysterious wickedness, verse 7, is already at work. Just like John says in his letter, there are already antichrists already at work, even though we know that there is going to be someone or something or some force or some, some institution or something that's going to come, that is going to represent the spirit of Antichrist. And, and one day, that someone, something, wicked, evil power is going to come. And, and Paul's point is that on, the, the Lord will not return until after this rebellion until after this wicked one is revealed and entice and draw lots of people unto himself, just like the beasts in Revelation 13. So, what's the point? Okay, so I, I, think, I think the point that I, I want us to, to take away, maybe from this this morning, is that the coming of the Lord will, <laughs> will not happen until we see wickedness on a, on a more, what's that, on a more um, powerful scale than we see now. Wicked, the, the wickedness will get worse, sisters and brothers, before it gets better. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. 
Um, and, and that's I think that's the point that Paul is making. Whether it's a person or not, that's not the point. The point is there is going to be a, in the very last of the last days, an evil power, an evil force in the world that will entice and draw people to itself like the, 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 the woman Babylon in Revelation 17. That, 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 that God is going to, um, um, th th there, is, there is this force, this evil force, and the Lord Jesus will not return until that evil force is, 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 is revealed and, 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 and the world becomes even more evil <laughs> than it is now. And, and, and sisters and brothers, that is not a good prospect to look forward to. But for those of us who are in Christ, we have nothing to fear because we have the mark of Christ upon us. And, um, and so Paul talks about the fact that the, the, Ephes the, the Thessalonian believers, they are chosen by God for salvation. For God chose you as the first to be saved by the Spirit's power, to make you his holy people and by your faith in the truth. God called you to this through the gospel we preach to you. In other words, sisters and brothers, God's people are safe. Uh, there may be that wicked one who is coming into the world, but he will not be able to entice and draw God's people away. God's people will be protected because God's people are chosen by God for salvation. All right, let's leave that there. Let's move to prayer. Um, the other problem is who, who restrains this wicked one, which is a, a whole other story, and I'm not going to go into that this morning. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father, we are grateful for your goodness and mercy this new day. We thank you, Lord, for sustaining us through the night. <clears throat> for giving us health and strength to see another day. And so, Lord, we pray for each other. We pray for those who feel weak in their body today. We pray for those who are, as it were, under the weather, those who are suffering from the cold, those who are, who are suffering fever or, 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 or some sort of, some sort of flu-like symptoms. We pray for them. And there's so many in our own congregation and those we know who are suffering at this time from the cold. And so, Lord, we bring that to you among so many other things in our hearts. You know what's on our hearts. Lord, you know the groanings of our hearts. You know that every sigh, every groan is a prayer. And so, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit will take every groan and sigh, even tears, and offer them as prayers from our hearts to you today. So, Lord, we, we entrust our day to you. We don't know. We don't know what this day holds, but, Lord, you do. And so we seek your grace today. As we travel along the road, as we walk, Along the pavement, we pray that you'll watch over us and keep us from falling literally on the ice uh, and, and guide our steps, we pray, so that physically and spiritually we will be upheld by your powerful, by your mighty arm. As so a Lord, we bring to you the concerns and needs of the world and those things that are on our hearts today. We pray for our world as we, as we start, the sun rises here again in, in the West. We pray, O oh God, for this world. And we ask for your intervention in the, in the various parts of our world where there is evil, where there is the mysterious power of wickedness that is already at work in our world. Lord, we pray that, that, that just like you chose, just as you chose the Thessalonians and you've chosen us by the power of the gospel, by the preaching of the gospel, we pray, Lord, 
that that gospel, you will use the power of that preached gospel to bring others to you, you know, people everywhere in our world who, who have not yet bowed the knee to Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will bring them in into, your, into, into the safety of your sheepfold outside from the, from the assaults of the evil one and all, the, all that is evil in this world. So Lord, especially at this Christmas time, we ask that you will bring salvation, the Savior, into the life of those who don't know him. Uh, those in our own community, those on every street in our parish, on every home that receive a leaflet, a Christmas card from us. May the Savior enter in this Christmas season. May he, may they find room in their hearts for him, Lord, this Christmas time. We pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for a world. We pray for the, we continue to pray, continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. Oh God, have mercy on them, we pray. Bring peace to the people of Ukraine. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> this evening we have our carol singing at Westfield at 6.30. Lord, we pray for that as a, as a witness of your people in our community this Christmas season. For all the carol singings and for especially for those in the public square. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will bless this endeavor. What, however small, however weak it may be, we pray that you will bless it. So that those who pass by and hear us caroling. And feel, we may feel the joy, may experience something of the joy and the hope and peace and love of Christmas. So bless us this evening as we meet at Westfield to sing carols. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue to pray for those on our hearts. We pray uh, for Jean and Walter and Monica and Auntie Janie, for Sue. For Veronica and Chester, for Dolly and Desmond, for Jean Murphy, for Hannah, for Pat, Pauline, and her mom, Daphne, Muriel, David, Maxine, Morris, Hilary, and Surya. We also remember Janice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, <coughs> whose son Jesus Christ proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life. Look with compassion on the anguish of this world and by your healing power, make whole both people and nations through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ be with me, Christ within me. <coughs> Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I also want to pray for the family of the, 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 the lady whose funeral I have today, that God will strengthen them and give them comfort in their time of mourning.
<clears throat> may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord watch over you and protect you may the Lord guide you and guard you from all evil today sisters and brothers and protect you in all your travels in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen <clears throat>